Hi everyone, I'm Susan with Pigtail Quilting and Stitching. Welcome to my channel. On this video, you're finally going to see how I organize some of my scraps and how I cut them into different sizes and organize them so I can kind of keep them organized. Also, I got my Quilt of Valor back from my quilter and I got the binding on. So I kind of want to show you that too. And also, I've got some spring quilts in my living room and dining room, and I kind of want to show how I've, I've displayed some of those. So, let's get started. So I got my uh, Quilt of Valor back from my long arm quilter two days ago. And yesterday I sewed the binding on and I just finished up hand sewing the back part on this morning. So I wanted to uh, show you my quilt. And my quilter did a beautiful job on the quilting. She used a, a pattern that really goes with the quilt and really looks really nice with the back as well. And it's called Starstruck number two. And it has stars in it with the little swirls. Kind of looks like paisleys. So it looks really kind of Americana. You can see a little, you can see a little star in it there. And as I, as I showed before, each one of my fabrics has some sort of star in it, including the back. And this pattern is from Missouri Star Quilts, and it was called Sawtooth Stars and Stripes. And this is the quilt that I'm doing for my Quilt of Valor. But I just wanted to show you this, because in my last video, I just had the top done. And so I wanted to share with you how it looks after I got it back from having it quilted. The batting I used is 80-20, Hobbs 80-20. And I think it's um, going to be really nice how it drapes. So I, it's all finished. And then I'll turn it and I'll show you how the back looks as well. So here is the back of the quilt. I used a wide back and it also, I think it's a Kim Deal fabric, I believe for the back, um, but it's kind of vintagey looking also, kind of Americana. I think it has little sprigs of wheat and some little birds and there are some little stars as well. This quilt is Again, it's 64 by 80. And I'm going to be putting um, a label on it. And I have an extra block of the stars. And so I'm going to use that as my label and have um, in the center of the star, I'll have a uh, have it machine embroidered, the date, the pattern, the, my name and the name of my long arm quilter who quilted it for. And then I will be giving it to the representative that represents the quilts of valor in our area. So this was real fun to work on. And I just wanted to show you my finished quilt. I'm just going to give you a really quick 
spin around my living room and dining room that I have with my spring quilts and kind of uh, for Easter. And so some of these you might have seen, but I just put some out in the last week, so I kind of wanted to share with you. So I'll kind of just start on my armoire. I've had this quilt, I think in my videos, but a different place. And I just had to get my bunnies out. And this quilt here, my sister gifted to me for my birthday one year. So I just love the fabrics that are in that quilt. Come around here. See the front of that quilt on my stitching chair. And then down here, I have another of my reproduction quilts. I just brought out the colors. This was up in a bedroom, and so I just pull them out of my little cupboard I have and kind of bring them out for spring. I have a little vintage bunny that was made for a flower arrangement way back, probably in the 50s. And then I hung my little panel that I did last year and just uh, hung it above my couch this year. I think I just had it on the couch last year. A little vintage bunny there. And then I have a little my little table topper that I made that went along with this. Just had a little cross stitch pillow that I had made. These were on Fat Quarter Shop, and they are like a free pattern. They were last year's ones that went, uh, I think, with the house. And I just made a few of them, and then I just made mine into pillows. I have another one over here. one of my uh, first cross stitches also. Got snow out there. I have another kind of a springtime quilt. And then I just kind of changed out here for a little bit of a spring theme. Just got the little my little Muffy, but this is Hoppy, the little bunny. She's got her little spring Easter on too. One of my wool uh, pieces that I did, my very first piece. I haven't done a lot of wool. So then I'll just take you in the dining room and just show you what I've done to kind of get it into spring in there. Just put an, a quilt on my dining room table. And I've had this on my armoire also, but I just, uh, decided I would put it here and I use some of my fabrics in a bowl just to kind of bring out the colors. I have a layer cake and some leftover, some fat quarters, along with my little truck for spring. So I just thought that kind of brought out those colors. And then I have my Lori Holt Big Shop quilt that I made in Great Granny Squared hanging over the little rack over here. Actually, that's a drying rack that's turned on its side. A 
I'm not moving too fast. This was a kit, this um, quilt, I think it was by Cory Yoder. Did that a couple years ago. And then I did change out here. I had my bowls before and I used some of my different colored ones and transferred my little pig pillows into that. So I always love to use the bowls that are kind of fun. So I thought I'd take you down to my sewing room and just show you how I organize and cut my scraps and some leftover um, pieces. And I've kind of been working on this to kind of get it a little bit more organized, but um, I mostly have reproductions as, as you've seen in my past videos and the yardage I have on um, fabric boards and my fat quarters are all stored in bins and I've showed that in a in a cabinet in my previous videos but what I just did this last summer is I, I purchased these at Target I think they're no longer um, available as I checked because I wanted to get one more but they do have something a little different too now so in, and they always come out with a replacement but I'm going to start over here and what I did was uh, my sister gave me some one and a half inch strips and I've used those for some projects but I still have quite a bit of them so I have my one and a half inch strips and then if I had anything there's some my reds I'll start down here to kind of show um, so if I have anything five inches or more I cut five inch strips because from there I can cut two two and a half inch strips or five inch squares. I also, if I have three inches, if it's shorter, I cut three inch strips and I can also get two one and a half inch strips from those three inch strips or three inch squares. Or I can even cut them down to two and a half. And stuff and pieces that I don't have uh, a three inch, but I do have a two, something I get a two and a half inch, I will use that. So that. That might sound a little confusing, but I kind of went with what Lori Holt does with her scraps. And um, if I have anything that's a little, like a lot of different pieces from a kit, and the kit is a fabric that I don't really have a lot of the fabrics, I will use those for bear quilts, for the adopt bear quilts, which I've done a video on how our guild and we do these projects with a teddy bear and make a bear a little doll size quilt. So a lot of those go there as well as um, tiny, you know, leftover pieces of batting from our quilting projects. So really nothing goes to waste. But I've been asked, uh, what do I do with all my scraps? So uh, that's kind of what I've been doing. So I just wanna have to show you this because I have reproductions from a long time ago. And these are some pieces of some really old ones that I just don't cut. But I wanna show you, there's one piece here and <laughs> I didn't want to cut it because the selvage says 1997 and um, that's actually the year that I start quilting and a lot of these are some of the first reproductions uh, that Judy Rothermel and some of the other designers put out so they kind of um, have a little sentimental value, uh, meaning to me. So I will show you some more. So I have some pinks and purples in one and a half. There's some three inch and five inch and then a little bit of two and a half and there's some pinks five inch and three inch and then a few two and a half also stick out here and that one's empty so move over here there's some of the greens and teals in the one and a half inch There's some five inch greens and some three inch uh, greens. And then so, um, and then, let me show you this one. There's some of the two and a half inch strips of yellow and my one and a half inch also of 
yellow and kind of orange. And there's some five inch and three inch of some yellows. So these are all my reproductions in here. So you can kind of see that. So I have, have um, where I can, you know, when I'm, when I'm done, if I don't have, it's a smaller than a back quarter, it gets cut up into either a five inch strip, a three inch strip, or two and a half inch, and if I don't have anything that's one and a half. And then some of it just gets put into a bag for bear quilts, for adopt a bear quilts. So I'll move around here. And I have two more of these in the front of my sewing table. And that's where I have my Lori Holt scraps. Because Lori Holt scraps, I kind of keep together because if I want to make a scrappy quilt using all of hers or something, I can just group those all together. So I'll start here in the bottom. And these are some, some fat quarters, some not. Some I've cut some off of, but I will use those in, um, that one's empty. Another quilt. These are, uh, like, some of these are 10-inch square still. And half of a 10 inch square or pieces of a 10 inch square and then there's also some um, bigger pieces from a kit that I saved out from a project and I think this was called the scrappy uh, granny squared one that I did last summer and here's some Lori Holt two and a half inch squares left over from the granny squared uh, sew along that I did uh, with the scrappy uh, last summer and there's an alternative like a, a secondary small quilt that you can make with the leftovers so I did save out those um, when I, if I want to put a smaller one together so you can kind of see those are my Lori Holtz so in this one see I still have some empty there's a piece from uh, a backing, I believe, and I can use that for a bear quilt backing or something like that because those are just really small or um, whatever one if I have because I have some um, small pieces like that. And these are left over from um, fat quarters of Lori Holt, which I cut into five inches, and I've got three inches, and then there's some one and a half. So those are all in there. And here's also some two and a half inches and then some five inch squares and some pieces also. So those that's kind of how I have it organized that. So in fact, I just had a bag of fabric um, go to for the, the bears that I had put together from some of my kits that I had leftover fabrics from. And I kind of like to um, do that. So you can kind of see how this is. But I kind of wanted to share you with that because I've gotten some questions on, on that and I have gotten them kind of somewhat um, together. I did get these cute little little food trays or something. I mean, they're like disposable, but I thought they're cute when I'm a piecing and I have my pieces cut out quilts. When I have my pieces cut out, and I want to have them by my sewing machine or cut them from my cutting table, but I will um, use one of these and then I can um, have them kind of organized by squares. I've used those in the last, um, my heart quilt, and it really kind of kept me a little organized. Plus, I could stack them up and then just, um, if I was going to take them to my sewing, when I sew them with my group, I could just put them in my little container and... They wouldn't be disturbed. So, anyway, just kind of back up. I'm going to show you how I have it. And those just fit nicely under my table. Still have my fat quarter towers that I love to use for decorations as well as um, making quilts. And I did use uh, one of my little that kind of bundles um, for my uh, heart quilt. Oops. So 
So thank you for watching this video and for subscribing to my channel. Up next on Pigtail Quilting and Stitching, I'm going to show my progress from my stitching retreat and how that little quilt is um, coming along. And also I started a new quilt and I wanna show you the progress on that too. So thank you for watching.